In this video, I'm going to show you how I use the programming language processing to convert an image into a vectorized piece of ASCII art and then printed it out using an XY pen plotter. A pen plotter can be controlled using G-code, the same instruction set that a 3D printer uses. So the process of making a vectorized piece of art and a 3D model, although they're completely different, they can be programmed to be replicated in a very similar fashion. And it's a lot of fun to play with once you get the hang of it. So here we are in the processing environment. I might make a more detailed video explaining exactly how this program works in the future, but for now we're just going to quickly go through and see how we go from an image to a vectorized piece of art that we can then plot. Basically what we're doing is we're going through and we're pulling the values for each pixel. And to do that we're taking the RGB values and summing them and then averaging them. And that gives us a relative amount of brightness so on a scale of 0 to 255, how bright is this pixel? And from there. We're taking that brightness and using that to drive the size of the element. So in this case, we're using the ASCII character E, and basically the darker the pixel is, that changes the size to create a larger value. So the darker, the bigger the E. The smaller it gets, the smaller the E, and we even have between a brightness of 0 to 20, so that's sort of as white as you can get, that we don't make anything. And that helps give us a little bit of highlight, so areas like the tip of your nose or a reflection in your hair, those areas uh, will show up a little bit sparser. And that's it, that's the entire program. So from here what we're doing is we're exporting the file as an SVG, so I can see if I run this file, I'm gonna take this picture of Erica and then convert it into this. So this is the final product. So here we have the file loaded into Inkscape, and you can see that I've got a border added around the image, and that just gives me an idea of where to trim so I know where to cut if I want to frame this. And we can also see that all of the E's look pretty good, and this is going to plot pretty well. So I'm using a Inkscape plugin called G-Code Plot, and this lets me generate the G-Code directly from within Inkscape. So I don't need to add Cura plugins, or there's no sort of third-party slicer involved. Um, from here, I can actually determine movement speed, travel speed, how far I want the pen to lift between um, plotting moves, things like that. And once I have all of those settings configured, I hit OK. That exports a G-code file, which I can put on a thumb drive, put that into the plotter, and hit Go. I'm using an ANET ET4X for my pen plotter, and it has a custom design tool head that I made in SolidWorks that's able to hold a wide variety of pens. For this video, I'm experimenting with using a 0.2 and a 0.25 millimeter fine liner, and you can see here the detail captured with these pens is pretty good. So even though the element size is fairly large and you can pretty clearly make out the ease, you can still see a good bit of detail and see what the original model looks like. I'm really happy with the overall performance of this plotter, and I've made some pieces of art that I'm really proud of. I've also learned quite a bit about the process, so here we can see a 0.2 millimeter width pen provides a good bit of detail and very finely defined letters. And if we switch to a 0.25 millimeter pen, we can see everything becomes a lot more saturated. All the letters, even though they're the same size, they seem a lot darker. And we can see that here comparing the 0.2 to the 0.25. It's not a huge difference in terms of pen width, but it really stacks up. Calibration is also really important. And we can see here very finely detailed ease and the bed wasn't perfectly level, so at the top we can see where it was too low, the E's were sort of sloppy and they look a lot more handwritten. This is good and bad, I think it looks kind of cool in this instance, but generally speaking it shows how important the calibration is. Overall, I think this is a great process for making gifts or prints for friends and family that have a very unique story to them. If you have any questions about this process, feel free to leave it in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching and have fun printing.